Hey, hello there. Today I'm looking at uh, question 1229, meeting scheduler. Uh, so let me try to summarize the problem because it's a lot of word here, words to read through. So basically, uh, imagine that we are developing a web uh, calendar application, and uh, one of our features is to suggest a, a meeting time for two participants. So uh, potentially m multiple, uh, but here we are looking at the, a question that only concerns two participants to have a meeting of a certain duration. So because with the calendar application, we have access to both of those two participants' uh, availabilities. And um, our task is to find the first uh, shared availability slot that uh, can we can put this meeting onto both of those two people's uh, calendar. So that's the question. Looking at the example, we have slots one, which is the um, availability of the first person. So uh, this guy will be free between 10 to 50, uh, free between 60 to 120, uh, free between 140 and 210. And slots two is the availability of the second person. This guy will be free between zero to 15 and be free between 60 to 70. And we want to place a call or a meeting of duration eight on both of those two people's uh, calendar in the same position. And it has to be as early as possible. So just uh, by eyeballing it, this, uh, we can see that uh, the earliest that we can do is to from 60 to 68. Um, so that those two people can jump on a call for eight units of time, uh, and that's the earliest that we can do. And we can we, we, now application would just suggest this to be the uh, meeting time. Uh, so that's the output for this uh, example. Now the second example, it, it's basically the same availability for these two people. Now the duration of the uh, required uh, meeting gone up by four, so it's twelve, uh, because it's longer than the availability here. Uh, there is no way that uh, we can schedule this meeting on both of those people's uh, calendar. So th uh, in, in that case, we just return a uh, empty list. So that's the uh, example and uh, the re requirement on the output. If it's possible, we just return the uh, starting time and end time. Otherwise, if it's impossible, we return an empty list. So how we go about to uh, solve this? Uh, we're just going to look at this in a very intuitively way. Um, how would they, you know, if you're manually doing this uh, uh, scheduling yourself rather than, uh, you know, asking a program to do this? So I'm uh, basically just looking at uh, the two people's uh, availability in the sorted order. So I look at uh, check in the morning, starting early in the morning. Uh, I see that uh, person B is uh, able to jump on a call uh, starting from this time. So I will. Uh, after I see this, I would just uh, look into the other person's calendar and see uh, is there any time slot in the early morning, uh, so it's going to be the first available time for person A as well. Um, is there any overlap? Yes, there is, but uh, the overlap is not long enough, so they, uh, we couldn't uh, put uh, a call for, for the required duration for both of them here. So then uh, we're basically going to give up uh, this time slot. Uh, once this line, basically this, this uh, imaginary line swiping through the problem space have gone through this uh, uh, left side of the interval, we can, because this, uh, 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 you will never be able to uh, fit the bill anymore. So we're just going to ignore this once this line go past here. Then we uh, look at the, this interval for person A. Uh, we try to see do uh, does person B have a uh, next available time slot that can share some kind of uh, uh, um, you know common sections with this uh, uh, interval we're looking at on person A that uh, we can put a meeting on there. Uh, they are actually disjoint, so we're just going to give up uh, that interval as well and keep moving the uh, line towards the. Uh, you know, larger in the problem space. Maybe probably we're looking at uh, somewhere in the afternoon, after lunch break, they suddenly all become available. Uh, so, and the shared uh, time between these two person uh, long enough for us to place the call. So we just place it here. So it's going to be the earliest that we can do because we are looking at the, the two persons schedule, uh, you know, availability in the sorted order in, in terms of time. So. Uh, that basically summarizes uh, uh, how we're going to solve this. We're going to um, grab their two persons availability uh, 
in the sorted order of their starting time. And at any given moment uh, that uh, we have uh, this line that uh, swiping through a uh, starting to swiping through a availability uh, slot for one of the person, the thing that we do is to compare uh, the first available time slot for those two people um, after this swiping line, uh, on and after this swiping line. Uh, if the overlap is lot it does not exist or not long enough. Uh, we're gonna keep swiping the line. Uh, once the line go past uh, the left side of the uh, of the interval, we just discard it. And then the next time we find a left interval of uh, another call, uh, another availability, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna compare the first available time slot for those two people after this swiping line, and do the same check. Uh, so and rings and repeat until we can find a uh, shared slot. Uh, if the line go beyond the uh, go past the right last available time for one of the person, then uh, we can conclude it's not possible. So uh, basically, uh, to do this, we need those two people's uh, uh, availability in the sorted order, but we don't need that in the very beginning. Um, we can. O all we want is to, when we want to do this comparison, we want to grab the currently, uh, uh, you know, earliest available time slot. So we can use a prior queue for this. Um, but but sorting is uh, is also okay uh, because prior queue in the worst case, uh, the time complexity is going to be the same with the sorting, uh, except uh, except that. Uh, uh, we are being lazy, so if we can find a slot early on, then prior to queue definitely uh, can save some time complexity. But the, the worst complexity doesn't doesn't change compared to do the two sorting and just grab the availability uh, in in the sorted order. So yeah, then and and the test between those two uh, availability is just a standard kind of interval intersection test. Uh, if the uh, intersection is long enough, we can uh, return that. So uh, that's a lot said. Uh, the code is pretty simple. So we're just going to do uh, put these two things onto priority queue. Uh, uh, in Python, basically, the algorithm for priority queue, heap queue, is uh, separated with the underlying container. So we basically just call this function on the two container. Uh, then we're just gonna do uh, while we have any, uh, while we still have some kind of available time slot, uh, we haven't looked at uh, from those two person. We're gonna try to compare the first available between those two. Um, so because it's a priority queue, the uh, zeros element on this container now has to be the minimum. By default, uh, uh, the the heap queue here in Python is mi uh, main priority queue. So uh, we're just gonna grab the uh, first uh, left hand side and first uh, right hand side of the availability for the person. Doing a little bit unpacking, it's unnecessary, but the variable name will make it uh, uh, easier to read the next time. I think. So we grab the first two per, uh, the the first availability for those two person after the line basically, uh, and then and then we're just gonna do a comparison to the uh, to see the intersections. So we're gonna uh, uh, the intersection left and right is gonna be the uh, maximum of the two left and the minimum of the two right. So if this uh, right is long enough so that means it's larger than left uh, plus the duration um, then we can return the left plus the duration uh, otherwise we will figure out uh, uh, which uh, interval is more close to is, is on touch of the uh, basically the swiping line and we want to just uh, get rid of that uh, available time slot because it's not going to be uh, useful for us anymore. Once the line swipes through this uh, uh, object and uh, the event has already been triggered, that object uh, is no longer meaningful to us anymore. So we're just going to determine this by testing the left, uh, left side. 
So if L1 is less than L2, uh, we want to give up uh, L1. Um, so basically popping that out of uh, the uh, first priority queue. Otherwise, we're going to pop the interval from the uh, availability from the second uh, person. Um, if, if we exhausted uh, the search uh, for uh, availability of uh, one of the person, uh, we just return an empty, empty list. Yeah, so this is the code. Um, the the runtime for this is basically uh, let's say that uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, n different slot for person one and m slot for person two. So the worst case is that uh, we test almost for all those two two people we uh, we extracted uh, um, towards the very end. So it's going to be n log n plus m log n. Uh, that's the time complexity and this this comparison basically is constant so you know the list the intersection calculation stuff it's constant all the time is uh, a linear time to do this hippify initial hippify and then the subsequent uh, uh, pop keep pop would take log time with respect to the uh, size of the priority queue so we have two uh, if they both you know uh, went through the rear end it would be uh, m log m plus n log n uh, and for space uh, we're basically reusing this um, if we make a copy then uh, it's going to be linear uh, with respect to m plus n so it's m plus n space uh, so that's that's this question um, yeah so um, Pretty simple actually, so.